There are many ways to hula hoop and I hula hoop to gain lean muscle so that my metabolic rate is higher so that I can eat lots. That's why I have more metabolically active tissues. In this series, I've already had episodes where I explained about metabolically active tissues. When our metabolism is higher, we are burning energy even when we're asleep. We're burning more energy even all day than other people who do not have that much metabolically active tissue. With hula hooping, one can build more muscle. And in this video, I'm going to try and help one understand why is it that there's a lot of people who do lots and lots of hula hooping and exercising and they're not gaining muscle and they're not able to change their physique much. And why is it that I don't do that much exercise and still I gain quite a lot of muscle and I can still eat like a horse. Saw this online many times and it always makes me giggle that every girl's dream is not to find the perfect guy, but to eat without getting fat. This is not how I fell out of my mother, so I did not know any of this. If any of you didn't understand all this, it's okay. It took me many years of not just studying, but even I competed in fitness and I won. I had to hang out with weightlifters, fitness models, bodybuilders. I qualified as a fitness instructor, a personal trainer. I had to study strength and conditioning so that I understand how it all works. What's the point caring about timers and sets and hypertrophy? I did not understand. So it's okay to not understand, but it's a very avant-garde way of hula hooping that I do because based on all the things that I was learning, I created my style, which is more like hypertrophy hula hooping for gaining lots of lean muscle mass so, so we can enjoy an amazing metabolic rate so we can eat lots. I have been repeating myself a fair amount when I talk about conditioning workouts, volume training, hypertrophy and things like that. I think I've said these things, but I have come up with a really cool way that one can actually feel it. And when you feel the difference between the different styles of training, I think it really helps so that uh, you follow through or you train the way that it's most helpful for you to achieve your goals. My goals are to keep my body fat level quite low, increase lean muscle mass uh, so that I can sculpt my physique, but also muscle is an organ of longevity. I will talk about that in a bit as well. And I also like to keep my joints very healthy and stimulated because I like to have decent range of motion. Uh, basically, it's quality of life that I like. And I like to eat a lot but I don't want to look like I eat a lot. So for me, it's very important to do volume style training. And now that I said the word volume, I already want to make sure we speak the same language. In this video, I will refer to these two words. There will be relay and volume. Uh, they have a lot of meanings, but for the sake of this video, so that uh, I can refer to these words, I uh, will talk about relay when it's more like flow style hula hooping. When um, you don't repeat moves many, many, many times for a long set, but let's say you do it uh, one or two times, uh, you flow. So hula hoopers like to call this flow. So when they are dancing, uh, dancing kind of uh, flowing hula hooping, I will refer to as relay in this video. And uh, there's my style, uh, which you can experience in my conditioning workouts, that I will refer to as volume, because that is what I do to stay in shape. And I'm not saying any of them would be inferior or superior or whatever. It, it depends on what your goals are. Different goals require different training, depending on your goals and your fitness level at the moment. You can choose how you train, what suits you best. Yeah, you will see. For you to experience the difference between relay and volume, I recommend picking up a hula hoop, but you don't even need one. So it's enough even if you just sort of copy what I'm doing. How easy is that, right? So you don't even need a hula hoop. And if you want to use a hula hoop, it doesn't matter what kind of hula hoop you're going to pick up. I'm going to be using a toy shop hula hoop. The moves that I'm going to be including are in my hula hoti course. If you're not familiar with them, don't worry. If you are, <laughs> this is your lucky day. So let's crack on and do this experiment. I do have a timer, but for the relay or flow style 
hula hooping, there's no need to use a timer anyway. Usually it's a song that we dance to or something like that. Let's try and put some moves together. Let's say isolation is our first move. So if you've uh, done my hula hoti course or you probably are hooping from wherever, you're familiar with isolation and then an infinity, which is a figure of eight. Let's try the same on the other side. Then let's do a can can, which is uh, putting the hoop from one hand to the other and then lift one leg and then the other leg and then a chicken on one side and let's do the same on the other side and I don't really quite like these kind of workouts because we don't even know how long we had the hoop on one side correct like we were just flowing and uh, hula hoopers like to argue about which way the hoop is spinning but they don't take that into consideration how long they used it on one arm and how long the other arm um, but let's not argue about that. Let's repeat this. So we are flowing. We are doing an isolation. We are doing an infinity. We are doing an infinity on the other side. We are doing a can can on uh, lifting one leg and then lifting the other leg and then chicken on one side and then chicken on the other side. So this is the relay style hula hooping like a flow, like dancing. And uh, what you probably notice is it gives a variety of muscles some workout. So you're using different muscles. Um, and while one muscle is resting, the other one is working. They are taking turns. That's why I chose to call it a relay. This is how you can help your muscles ditch the workout and join the party. They can just rest, refuel and stay fresh throughout. And this style of hula hooping, you can pretty much do all day. You can freestyle dance the weekend away, you can go to a festival and look cool all the way through. Even your muscles are having a party. And now let's try volume style training, that's what I do. For that we do need a timer because I like to know the duration of the set. For me it's very important, I need to know how long I've used one side and for how long I used the other side. So I'm going to start the timer I normally use. I use this for my own workouts as well as for filming whenever I film my conditioning sessions. I've set it to 90 seconds and for that I have very good reasons. Do look into durations of sets, what are the recommendations for moderate intensity exercise to improve flexibility or strength. Uh, and then you will see there will be a lot of different ranges of times and recommendations. 90 I think is a very sweet one for uh, a grown up <laughs> who doesn't want to compete in the Olympics and doesn't want to do a one rep max. So let's see, we're going to do for 90 seconds on one side, we will do the can can, so we will lift the leg up and then put it down and the hoop will go from one hand to the other. And as I said, you don't even need a hula hoop, so you can just do this if you don't have a hoop at hand. So I'm going to start the timer and uh, it's going to start in a minute in three, two, one. Let's go for our can can. We keep going on this very same side. If you can, please try and point your toes. And the reason for that, like nice and straight and pointed, is you're going to be using more muscle. If more muscle is contracted, then it increases the energy expenditure of your set. I know that a lot of people don't like to smile or don't like to point toes or care about the lines uh, and their shapes, but it does help because if someone wants to change their physique then it helps to contract more muscle and keep them under control. It's not about making it look stage perfect, it's about how much energy you're using, how much muscle is being activated during your set. And we keep going on this set, uh, in this side, we still have 40 seconds to go. If you need to, of course, you can rest. A lot of the times I say that you're not expected to last, you're expected to keep trying. So once you gave your leg a wiggle, then you try again. And then as many times as you must, you rest. Soon it will be time to change. We're really beasting this side. <laughs> and the other side is almost relaxing, but it's not really, is it? Because that's where all our weight is rested. So both sides are working. They're just doing different kind of work. 
one is doing an isotonic style exercise, whereas the other one is isometric. Now it's the other side. We're going to lift, point the toes, and put the hoop from one hand to the other as we lift the leg. I mentioned flexibility, and I would like to talk about that right now, that in the beginning normally, when we start doing an exercise like this, this does require some flexibility because you need to elevate your leg high enough. At the beginning of a set, normally, we still need to get the juices going because your joints, they need lubrication. And uh, for, for that, you need a couple of repetitions. And this is why in the beginning of the set, maybe you can't lift your leg up that high. But the longer you keep going, somewhere around the middle of your 90 second set, you're able to go higher and higher. It's highly in cartilage, that's its nature. So if you keep going, you will be able to get more flexible throughout your set. That flexibility will start to <laughs> creep, to decrease, because you will start seizing up <laughs> and the muscle will have enough of you. But this way, you are probably feeling a difference, what the relay style or the volume style training feels like. Can you feel anything? I can feel my glutes, my hip flexors, my quadriceps, my everything. <laughs> and it's three, two, one. Now you can relax. Volume is how one can chisel moves, make them look good. Because people like to tell me how dare I make it look so good. It's because I do so many repetitions. If I only did it once and then moved on to something else, I would miss out because I wouldn't see room for improvement. Like I could point my toes here or I can elongate that muscle and straighten my legs or bend my back. So during a volume set, I don't just stimulate muscle growth, but I also chisel the moves. I make them look better. And those who do relay style hooping, they don't just miss out on muscle and chiseled moves, but flexibility because their joints do not receive adequate amount of stimulation. So for those who are complaining to me about their lack of flexibility, it is because of they don't do enough volume. Flexibility goes hand in hand with volume as well as smooth moves. When people complain that their moves look very mechanical, darlings, it will look less mechanical if you do more volume. You just need reps. The rest of this video you can watch absolutely free of charge on my website. If you're interested, look at the link in the description. On my website in the video series I detail cortisol and how overtraining and burnout can actually make one hold on to more fat however little they eat and however hard they work out in the gym. If interested have a look, it's free. And just wanted to say whatever physique you desire for yourself, you've got all it takes, you're not hopeless, your body is ready to reward you with gorgeous lean tone if you learn to love it and treat it with care and respect.